my name is Amanda Sturgeon and this is my lecture presentation on the vision screening process for New Mexico public schools. This is the outline my presentation will follow and by the end of this uh, lecture you should be able to identify who needs to be screened, what ages, why, what types of screenings, and how to perform them safely during the pandemic. So why do we screen in schools? Vision problems in children are common and if left untreated can lead to permanent disabilities and vision loss. Vision impairments can lead to behavior and literacy problems. Identifies children with possible eye diseases. Um, can identify amblyopia, which if not treated by ages six or seven can result in permanent vision loss in the affected eye. It's also an opportunity to educate children on eye health and hygiene. Some key terms to know, strabismus or cross-eyed, the condition where the eyes do not look at the same place at the same time, usually from a lack of muscle control, cannot be prevented but treated if caught early. Amblyopia, lazy eye, the result of untreated strabismus, reduced vision in one eye. Myopia is our term for nearsightedness, hyperopia, farsightedness, and OD, oculus dexters, how we chart the right eye, OS, oculus sinister, how we chart the left eye, and OU is both eyes. Helpful to remember that OS for left, uh, southpaws are lefties. Astigmatism. Irregular curvature of the cornea or lens, which produces a distorted image. It affects vision at all distances, corrected with glasses or contacts. Color blindness, um, an inherited vision defect. Inability to recognize certain colors, usually red or green, but rarely blue and yellow. Um, not correctable, but if we identify it, we can help students cope. Anisometropia unequal refraction of the two eyes, common cause of amblyopia. Legally blind is an acuity of 2200 um, or worse with best possible correction. And cortically blind, um, the visual system is intact but there's been brain damage and it prevents the brain from processing the visual image. Who needs a screening? In New Mexico, we do a general vision screening on pre-K students, ages three and four, kindergarten, ages five, first grade, ages six and seven, third grade, ages eight and nine, and we do a screening on new students or if anyone's had a deficit noted. We must notify parents when screenings will take place so that they can opt their child out if they desire. Um, students that are referred by SAT teams or student assistant team or special education teachers will get a general vision screening along with a near vision screening. Um, we must send referral notice if a student fails the screening follow-up. Types of vision screenings. We do a pre-screening assessment. Um, we ask the teachers to do a visual behavior observation or report any uh, thing they notice that way. Uh, distance visual acuity is measured. Ocular alignment is checked. For the SAT or SPED uh, referrals, we do a near vision acuity and we test for color blindness. So some of the behaviors that we ask teachers to refer or document on students. Students that are visually inattentive or uninterested, um, have difficulty maintaining eye contact, maybe hold objects too close, tilt their head, stare at ceiling lights, fans, um, might bump into things, trip over objects, or seem sensitive to light. We do a pre-screening assessment, uh, so we'll examine the eyes and look for a cloudy or milky appearance, a keyhole pupil, which is called a coloboma. Um, it's tissue that is formed irregularly in the pupil, which is rare but can cause vision problems. Um, a sustained eye turn in or out. We want to check for our droopy eyelids or ptosis. 
If the eyes are not moving together, abnormal pupil constriction or dilation, difference in size, shape of the eyes, excessive tearing, or any nystagmus noted, which is the irregular persistent movement. And these are the approved uh, testin testing charts for distance acuity recommended by the National Center for Children's Vision and Eye Health. Uh, these are the LEA, HO, HVOT, and the Sloan charts. They're tested at 10 feet or 20 feet, depending on the chart. There's a specific distance between the symbols, and they're all in an inverted triangle by design. The LEA can be used for children ages three to five or those that can that do not know their alphabet. Uh, passing for three is 2050. Uh, for a four to five year old, passing is 2040. These can be used with a key so they can just point to the object. A uh, Sloan, this is for ages six and above and passing is 2032. Some of the charts that you might see, but they're not approved, are tumbling e-charts. The Snellen, which is what we used in nursing school. We used it in the emergency room at the hospital. It's okay for general screening of adults. Uh, we just don't use them in the approved screenings for children. And you can also see some of these random object uh, charts, boats and umbrellas and stars and hearts, and these are not approved. These are the occluders that we use. Um, for three to 10 years old, we can use these adhesive patches. Um, we can use two inch surgical tape if we need to, or occluder glasses. For those that are 10 or above, we can use the Mardi Gras mask or the lollipop occluder. Um, one way to check ocular alignment, um, check their depth perception. So stereoacuity testing. Um, it's required only once in any of the target grades. This one is the random.etas, uh, checks for binocular abnormalities. Using um, polarized glasses, the student will need to be able to identify the object in one of the plates. Could be an E, could be a butterfly, could be a fly, depending on your test. Can be used on children three plus and we tilt the cards slightly backwards to ensure that there's no glare. Another test for ocular alignment is the Hirschberg test. This looks for equal corneal light reflex in each eye to see if they're aligned equally or in the same position. Uh, we shine a pen light 50 centimeters from their eye and have the student look at the light. And here you can see the reflection of the light is in the same position in both pupils. Um, some of the abnormal uh, results could be esotropia, or the eye is turned inward, and the reflection is on the outside of the pupil. Exotropia, eye is turned outward, and the reflection is on the inside. Hypertropia, eye is turned upward, and hypotropia, eye is turned downward. We can also use instruments to do ocular alignment screenings. They're called photo screeners. Two examples here. Um, it's quick and easy, takes less than 30 seconds, um, uses lights and sounds to keep younger children's attention. We can use it on uh, students pre-K through first grade or for students that are not able to participate in the other types of screenings. Um, it does not measure visual acuity, but it does give estimates of refractive error it uses a red reflex to test for the ocular alignment. Um, we must hold the machine about three feet from the student, so proper PPE is required right now. And for those students that require near vision acuity, um, which is not required for mass screenings, we can use a chart like this that comes with a 16 inch measuring cord. So that you can keep your 16 inches. You hold the cord up to the student's temple. 
Um, it can be the LEA symbols, HOTV, or Sloan letters for ages six and above. We test with both eyes open for near vision acuity. Um, they must identify 80% of the letters or symbols on the critical line of 2030. Near vision acuity testing is not always accurate for students 10 and younger, but it could help identify astigmatism because the symbols will be blurred. Color blindness screenings. Uh, this is also only required once in any target grade. Most commonly used is the Ishihara book with the pseudo-sochromatic plates. Um, these are sets of colored dotted plates showing either a number or a path for the student to follow with a Q-tip. Um, it's the most widely used color vision deficiency test. We use these in the hospital to check uh, staff and nurses so that they can properly um, assess a hemocult or gastrocult test. Cannot uh, do those if you're colorblind or to properly identify color-coded equipment. So some of the considerations for COVID for screening. Um, we wanna prioritize the initial screenings for students who have never had a previous screening done or that demonstrate need. If possible, we want to screen in a large, open, well-ventilated space or outdoors if possible. Uh, we want to maintain six feet between the screener and child, or if that is not possible, we want to make sure appropriate PPE is utilized, including a mask, face shield, gown, and gloves. We want to ensure the student has a properly fitting mask. Um, we must document students for contact tracing purposes. We want to ensure that the student and screener washes their hands both before and after each student. We need to disinfect equipment and frequently touched surfaces in between each student and utilize disposable supplies if possible. And we can also postpone the color screening and the ocular alignment in the younger students if necessary, depending on the COVID numbers in your area. And so just to recap, um, it's important to screen students in elementary schools to identify vision problems before they impact the student's learning and behavior. We want to prioritize initial screenings for students who have never had one or that demonstrate need. We must use proper PPE, um, good ventilation, and maintaining our social distancing while screening. Uh, the different screenings we do include distance visual acuity, uh, ocular alignment with either stereo acuity tests, photo screeners, or the Hirschberg test. We can use near vision acuity cards and we test uh, color vision. We also want to make sure we rescreen any students that fail after two weeks and then send a referral home to parents if need be. And these are my references. Thanks so much.